Hi, I'm Bronnie Lennox-Thompson and my pain story is quite long-standing. Um, back in, hmm, when I was about 21, a patient and I did a tango in a doorway and he was bigger than me and I landed underneath him. And that's when my back pain started. And it was about two or three years later when I'd had a lot of different treatments, but I was still working, um, that I was sent to the chronic pain service in Auckland, New Zealand. And there I was um, advised those fateful words, I'm sorry, there's nothing more we can do for you. And my heart just broke a little, <laughs> which I laugh about now. But then he said, um, this is Dr. Mike Butler, who's a rheumatologist in, in Auckland. He's now retired. And he said to me, read this book through, well, he showed me Malzac and Wall, The Challenge of Pain, which is just, was amazing. So what it showed me was that my pain wasn't about damage, but what it didn't show me was how to live with the pain. So I had to do that myself. Um, and so that's how I've sort of, over the years, with my occupational therapy background, and because I knew that this wasn't harming me, that I could just get on and live. Um, you know, if this is as good as, good as it's gonna get, then I'm gonna get as much as I can get <laughs> and just learn how to live well. So that's kind of my story. It's not why I got into working in pain management. I did um, vocational rehabilitation and many of the people I was seeing had chronic pain as their primary problem. And so I got intrigued with um, what this thing is that we call pain and how it affects people. Um, so I think people look Dr. Google is probably the first place that people look, but they, if they're looking for other information, but most people absorb what their family do, does, um, what the opinions of their health professionals are, and they acquire information from magazines and just the, the general culture um, around them, and that gives them a certain background um, understanding. It, and then their, with their own pain, um, particularly as time goes on, there's a process that I discovered in my PhD that people do things and from that begin to this, develop this predictive approach where they say, well, if I do this, that's what my pain will do. If my pain's like this and I do that, I can expect that to happen. And that seems to be a, an internal working out process. Um, and I don't think many clinicians actually step people through that process. I think it's about developing your own personal picture or model of your pain. So that might mean things like, when I'm feeling this way, so I'm feeling sad or stressed or happy, that helps me know how much my pain is going to bother me and I can look at certain activities and movements and mood states that might influence my pain. Um, I'd want to know the kinds of activities that I do that are going to set my pain off. So there are some things that I'm reluctant to do um, because I know the effect is going to be long-standing. Um, and then there are other things that are more, um, I can't put my finger on what set my pain off. And that's I think those are the ones, the unpredictable nature of pain, are the things that trip people up. And I don't know that there's any shortcut except for noticing what happened. And not just at the moment, and not just thinking of your physical movements, which is often the thing that people think about. Oh, I moved wrong, and that's why I'm sore. But thinking about those other things, like I'm tired, or I'm really bored, or I actually don't like doing the vacuum cleaning. Why would I want to do that? Oh, and that's why my pain is really playing up. So it's a collection of all those um, experiences, as well as the formal knowledge that people tell me that help make up a picture of, this is my pain, this is how it affects me. And it's so unique. Um, each person's experience, um, contexts, and the things that set their pain off are so unique. 
and we as health professionals need to recognise that.